Thank you for watching this video. You are taking an important step to ensure your dock is set up properly so you get many years of satisfaction from your investment. Our goal in this video is to confirm you have the correct dock components, understand the installation, and most importantly, know how to use it safely. It is very important all docks and accessories are assembled in accordance with Flow's assembly instructions and torque specifications are followed. This video is not intended to replace a thorough review of these instructions. These also include many critical safety messages that must be reviewed prior to installation and use. Manuals and instructions can be accessed online at www.floeintl.com. Now, let's get started. For roll-in docks, it's important to confirm you have the correct size wheel kits and they are assembled in the proper locations for the water depths where your dock will be installed. It is recommended the bottom of the dock frame is out of the water by a minimum of 8 inches. If you have wave conditions exceeding 15 inches, the dock height should be raised so waves pass under the dock surface. There are five different wheel kits accommodating depths from 12 inches to 108 inches. Ideally, select the wheel kit where the total water and mud depth falls in the center of the travel range. This allows upward and downward height adjustment if the water fluctuates and the dock needs to be adjusted. If your location requires the lower frame of the dock to be higher than 8 inches off the water, add the additional amount to the water depth measurement. For example, if wave action requires the lower dock frame to be 14 inches off the water instead of the normal 8 inches, then add 6 inches to the water depth measurement and select the correct size wheel kit from the chart. First, sketch your dock system on a sheet of paper or use the Flow Design a Dock from the Flow website and print it out. Identify and mark the location on the layout where the leg kits will be installed. Now, measure the water depth at each of the leg locations and write the depth measurement for each leg on the sheet of paper. A great tip is to use a rope and masking tape. In this example, we have a 12-foot ramp followed by two 16-foot sections. Mark the rope at 12 feet, 28 feet, and 44 feet based on your dock layout sketch. Now, stretch the rope over the water where the dock will be positioned. Use a tape measure to determine the water and mud depth at each of the taped locations. Record these depths accordingly on the layout sheet. The shore end of the first dock section after the ramp must be supported by using adjustable support posts, shore end wheel kits, or standard wheel kits. In this example, the depth measurement at the 12-foot mark where the ramp connects to the first section is 8 inches. We are using two and a half foot adjustable support posts at this location. The water depth at the 28 foot mark is 36 inches, which is where the first set of legs with wheels will be placed. Based on the sizing chart, the ideal wheel kit to use is medium. These medium leg kits are for water depths of 18 to 46 inches. At 36 inches of water depth, a medium leg kit gives you 18 inches to lower the dock and 10 inches to raise the dock. Repeat this process for all leg locations by measuring the water depth and selecting the correct leg kits. Prior to installing the dock in the water, it is recommended to pre-adjust the wheel kit legs. This will simplify the process by keeping the dock above the water during installation. The final adjustments will be made after the dock is installed. In addition to the easy level leg adjustment, Shallow and medium wheel kits have a manual adjustment feature to maximize overall adjustability. This manual adjustment should be done first. Loosen the set bolt and extend the inner leg in accordance with water depth as shown here. Never exceed 13 inches on shallow and 16 inches on medium of extended length. To continue adjusting the dock, Add 8 inches to the water depth measurements of your earlier layout to ensure that the bottom frame is out of the water 8 inches after the dock is installed. Now adjust each leg so the bottom frame of the dock is that distance off the ground. In this example, the water depth is 36 inches. 
we will add 8 inches to that measurement, so the bottom frame is 44 inches off the ground. To adjust the wheel kit legs, use a flow speed wrench, ratchet, or cordless drill in clutch mode. Never use air or electric impact tools, as these will cause damage to the leg kits. Now insert the 1 and 1 8 inch socket to the nut located through the decking surface. Turn the dock leg adjusting nut on the top of the dock clockwise to lower and counterclockwise to raise the dock. During adjustment, alternate wheel kit legs after a few inches. This will reduce binding of the sections and make leveling easier. If you cannot turn the adjusting nut, do not force it. You have reached the end of the adjustment range. Applying too much force to your dock legs will damage the mechanism. Next, attach Quick Connects as needed to create your dock layout. Quick Connects link the modular dock sections together instead of hard bolting. This allows for quickly adding or disconnecting dock sections. These Quick Connects should be spread apart as far as possible on the lower dock frame to keep the joining sections from shifting sideways. It is important to have Quick Connects properly positioned and torqued per assembly instructions. Some dock components, such as wedges and smaller sun decks, use a safety quick connect in addition to standard quick connects. On the safety quick connect, be sure the T-bolt is threaded under the dock frame to lock the wedge or sun deck in place. There are three common options to consider for installation, depending on the complexity of the dock system and the landscape of your shoreline. One option is to connect all dock sections on shore and roll out as one system. This is a great option if you have a gradual slope and adequate space on shore. A second option is to connect some sections on shore and roll out that portion of the dock. Then connect the remainder of the sections in the water. This option is common with larger layouts that may include dock slips or large sun decks. Another option is to roll each section out individually and connect them together in the water. This option is for those areas with landscape features such as seawalls, riprap, steep hills, trees, or limited shore space. If you are connecting the sections on shore, place the dock frame in the transport position of the quick connects so the dock can pivot as it rolls over variable terrain. Once the docks are in position, if you are using a ramp, Attach the ramp by placing the ramp hooks over the dock loops. Next, lift each dock section out of the transport position of the quick connect and insert it into the locked position. Now that the dock is in place, Flow's Easy Level system provides a simple way to level your dock and ensure it is at the correct height. Simply adjust the height of each leg so the bottom frame of the dock is 8 inches above the water unless a higher clearance is required, as discussed earlier. Use a flow speed wrench, ratchet, or cordless drill in clutch mode. Remember to never use air or electric impact tools, as these will cause damage to the leg kits. Now, insert the 1 and 1 8 inch socket onto the nut located through the decking surface. Turn the dock leg adjusting nut on top of the dock clockwise to lower and counterclockwise to raise the dock. During adjustment, alternate wheel kit legs after a few inches. This will reduce binding of the sections and make leveling easier. If you cannot turn the adjusting nut, do not force it. You have reached the end of the adjustment range. Applying too much force to your dock legs will damage the mechanism. Finally, use a level to make sure all surfaces are level. Once the dock is in place and is level, insert the plastic caps in the adjustment nut hole. Now it is time to install any accessories. Some dock accessories may be attached prior to putting the dock in the water. In general, flow dock accessories can be installed in a variety of locations throughout the dock system. Special hardware on roll-in and floating docks allow the accessories to be installed or moved without drilling or modifying the dock frame. Sectional dock accessories may require drilling holes through the dock frame prior to attaching the accessory. 
please follow any special recommendations for placement in accordance to the assembly instructions. These instructions are also available online at www.floeintl.com. If the dock is located where the water freezes, it should be removed prior to ice developing as ice can cause damage to the dock system. Some accessories must be removed before the dock is taken out of the water. These accessories include steps, canoe, kayak rack, and flagpole. You may also choose to remove furniture and store out of the elements. Accessories such as bumpers, ladders, benches, and cleats are commonly left on a roll-in dock in the off-season. There are three common options to consider for removing the dock depending on the complexity of the dock system and the landscape of your shoreline. One option is to remove the entire dock system in one piece. First, it is important to place all dock sections into the transport position of the quick connects. A second option is to disconnect and remove some sections separately, such as sun decks or sections used to make dock slips. The main section can then be removed in one piece. Another option is to disconnect and remove each section individually. This option is commonly in areas with landscape features such as seawalls, riprap, steep hills, trees, or limited shore space. Regardless of what method is used, it is important to follow these general rules. Pull the system out of the water either by hand, winch, or vehicle. Only pull from the side frame of the dock and not the end frame as damage may occur. It is common for the wheels to settle into a soft lake bottom. If using a winch or vehicle, use a slow and steady pull which will gently release the wheels from any settling. Do not use a jerking motion or begin with slack in the rope, chain or cable which can cause significant damage to the dock. If moving the dock over a seawall or riprap, a board or ramp will simplify the removal process. Once the dock is safely on shore, be sure it is clear from any future rising water or ice movement. The dock sections can remain connected together or be separated for more compact storage. This is also a good time for a thorough dock inspection including checking for loose hardware, broken welds, and ensuring the drain holes are free from obstructions. For sectional docks, it's important to confirm you have the correct size leg kits and they are assembled in the proper locations for the water depths where the dock will be installed. It is recommended the bottom dock frame is 11 inches out of the water. If you have wave conditions exceeding 10 inches, the dock height should be raised so waves pass under the dock frame. There are three different easy level leg sizes accommodating depths from 18 to 64 inches. A traditional pipe and bracket with set bolt option is also available. Ideally, select the leg kit where the total water and mud depth falls in the center of the travel range. This allows upward and downward height adjustment if the water fluctuates and the dock needs to be adjusted. When determining leg kit sizes, measure from where the leg pad will settle in to the lake bottom to the water surface. With that measurement, use the chart to select the correct size. If your location requires the bottom of the dock frame to be more than 11 inches out of the water, add the additional amount to the water depth measurement. For example, if wave action requires the frame to be 17 inches off the water instead of the normal 11 inches, then add 6 inches to the water depth measurement and select the correct size leg kit from the chart. If there's less than 14 inches of water, the leg kit can be attached to the outside of the dock. This will allow the dock leg to be raised above the dock surface to accommodate shallower water. If a pipe and bracket option is used, adjustments will be made by loosening the set bolt and adjusting accordingly. Then tighten the set bolt. First, sketch your dock system on a sheet of paper or use the Flow Design a Dock from the Flow website and print it out. Identify and mark the location on the layout where the leg kits will be installed. Now, measure the water depth at each of the leg locations and write the depth measurement for each leg on a sheet of paper. A great tip is to use a rope and masking tape. In this example, 
we have a 10-foot section used as a ramp followed by two 10-foot sections. Mark the rope at 10 feet, 20 feet, and 30 feet based on your dock layout sketch. Now, stretch the rope over the water where the dock will be positioned. Use a tape measure to determine the water and mud depth at each of the taped locations. Record these depths accordingly on the layout sheet. In this example, the depth measurement at the 10-foot mark, where the ramp connects to the first section, is 16 inches. The shore end of the first dock section after the ramp must be supported by four legs. We are using shallow legs at this location. The water depth at the 20-foot mark is 36 inches, which is where the second set of legs will be placed. Based on the sizing chart, the ideal kit to use is medium. These medium leg kits are for water depths of 26 inches to 54 inches. At 36 inches of water depth, a medium leg kit provides 10 inches to lower the dock and 18 inches to raise the dock. Repeat this process for all leg locations by measuring the water depth and selecting the correct leg kits. Prior to installing the dock in the water, it is recommended to pre-adjust the leg kits. This will simplify the process by keeping the dock above the water during installation. The final adjustments will be made after the dock is installed. To adjust the dock, add 11 inches to each of the water depth measurements on your earlier layout to ensure that the bottom frame is out of the water 11 inches after the dock is installed. Now, adjust each leg so the dock is that distance off the ground. In this example, the water depth is 36 inches. We will add to that measurement so the bottom frame is 47 inches off the ground. To adjust the leg kits, use a flow speed wrench, ratchet or cordless drill in clutch mode. Never use air or electric impact tools as these will cause damage to the leg kits. Now, insert the 1 and 1 8 inch socket onto the nut located through the decking surface. Turn the dock leg adjusting nut on the top of the dock clockwise to lower and counterclockwise to raise the dock. During adjustment, alternate leg kits after a few inches. This will reduce binding of the sections and make leveling easier. If you cannot turn the adjusting nut, do not force it. You have reached the end of the adjustment range. Applying too much force to your dock legs will damage the mechanism. Next, attach quick connects as needed to create your dock layout. Quick connects link the modular dock sections together instead of hard bolting. This allows for quickly adding or disconnecting dock sections. It is important to note that the sectional quick connects are reversible. The side with the spacer tab is used for connecting sections end to end. The other side is used for connecting side to side. Incorrect orientation will either produce a large gap or not provide enough space to connect the sections together. Some dock components such as wedges use a safety quick connect in addition to standard quick connects. On the safety quick connect, be sure the T-bolt is threaded tight to the dock frame which locks the wedge in place. Sectional docks are typically installed by starting at the shore and adding sections to create the desired layout. Now that the dock is in place, Flow's Easy Level System provides a simple way to level your dock and ensure it is at the correct height. Simply adjust the height of each leg so the bottom frame of the dock is 11 inches above the water, unless a higher clearance is required as discussed earlier. Use a flow speed wrench, ratchet or cordless drill in clutch mode. Remember to never use air or electric impact tools as these will cause damage to the leg kits. Now, insert the 1 and 1 8 inch socket onto the nut located through the decking surface. Turn the dock leg adjusting nut on the top of the dock clockwise to lower and counterclockwise to raise the dock. During adjustment, alternate leg kits after a few inches. This will reduce binding of the sections and make leveling easier. If you cannot turn the adjusting nut, do not force it. You have reached the end of the adjustment range. Applying too much force to your dock legs will damage the mechanism. Finally, use a level to make sure all surfaces are level. Once the dock is in place and is level, insert the plastic caps in the adjustment nut hole. Now 
is a great time to install any accessories. In general, Flow Dock accessories can be installed in a variety of locations throughout the dock system. Special hardware on roll-in and floating docks allow the accessories to be installed or moved without drilling or modifying the dock frame. Sectional dock accessories may require drilling holes through the dock frame prior to attaching the accessory. Please follow any special recommendations for placement in accordance to the assembly instructions. These instructions are also available online at www.floeintl.com. If the dock is located where the water freezes, it should be removed prior to ice developing, as ice can cause damage to the dock system. Some accessories must be removed before the dock is taken out of the water. These accessories include steps, canoe, kayak rack, and flagpole. You may also choose to remove furniture and store out of the elements. Accessories such as bumpers, ladders, benches, and cleats are commonly removed if the dock is stacked for storage in the off-season. Simply disconnect and remove each section individually. The leg kits can be easily removed in seconds without tools. Without the legs, sections are easier to move, store, and can be stacked in very minimal space. Once the dock is safely on shore, be sure it is clear from any future rising water or ice movement. This is also a good time for a thorough dock inspection, including checking for loose hardware, broken welds, and ensuring the drain holes are free from obstructions. Read and follow all safety rules and operating instructions in your owner's manual and on the products before attempting to install or operate any docked system. Your safety and the safety of others are very important. Always read and obey all safety messages. Safety messages will be preceded by the safety alert symbol and the word danger, caution, or warning. All safety messages will identify the hazard and tell you how to reduce the chance of injury. Warning! Cordless drill may come to a sudden stop when the leg is fully extended or retracted. Be sure to have your cordless drill in clutch mode when adjusting the legs. Failure to use drill in clutch mode may cause injury to your hand or arm. Use of a corded drill may cause electrocution. Warning! Never adjust your dock legs with an impact wrench. If you cannot turn the adjusting nut, do not force it. You have reached the end of the adjustment range. Do not exceed 15 foot-pounds. Applying too much force to your dock legs will damage the mechanism. Danger! Never allow anyone under or on the dock when installing or removing the dock. Flow, roll-in, and sectional dock's weight capacity is 30 pounds per square foot. Do not exceed the weight capacity of the dock. Extreme snow load could exceed the weight capacity. Never leave a quick connect on the end of a dock if you are not attaching a dock section to it. Serious injury could result if someone fell or hit the quick connect. Caution! Never run on a dock. Never pull on the end of the dock when removing it. Pull from the sides to avoid breaking the end frame piece. If dock legs are sunk in the mud, slowly float or winch the dock before removing the wheels or sand pads to avoid causing damage to the dock. If transporting a dock from one lake to another, inspect for invasive species such as zebra mussels. If found, please consult with your local DNR for proper disposal.